So by using layer styles and adding a highlight to my water droplet, I can play with all these different factors. And the one thing I want to play with in particular is the edge of that highlight so it doesn't feel so sharp. I can use this outer glow that you can see here in the image and you can see in the preview. And I can play with its size mostly. It's going to soften it more and more and kind of radiate out. But also its spread. Its spread will change its footprint, but not its softness. So size softens as it enlarges, whereas spread just widens. I can also play with its jitter, so it's not so uh, equal in how it spreads. And I can play with its noise, which I often do at this point, to give a little bit of graininess. You can see that difference in texture. So let me take the size down a little bit so it stays contained within the water droplet and say OK. Click off of it so you can see what that's doing. And then I can take the opacity on the whole thing down. Remember, you're seeing the blue because those are the vector shapes that make up this image. All right. And I might decide, OK, I want to take that whole thing, Control-T, and make it larger still. Now that it has those layer effects, it doesn't make sense that it's off-center. I'm going to center it more. Maybe move it down a little bit. There we see it. And then maybe I want to add another highlight shape, a new shape. And I'll just use the basic shape tools and use an ellipse. and create a little highlight that I can move around. Maybe about right there. And what's great about the layer effects is they can be copied and then duplicated onto new layers as well. So instead of going through and doing the whole thing with outer glow and opacity, which actually works just fine because this is pretty simple. To do that, so that works really well, <laughs> what I can do is make a duplicate of the layer with the effects I want to use, Command J, and then move the effects onto the new layer. And it will just copy those exact same effects and then delete the layer I copied. So now, I have those same effects in the circle shape. So that's really helpful. And I can turn off certain ones. And then I can layer them up together and get a droplet like that. All right, so far so good. So that's a way we can really augment it's going to nudge it a little bit and build more visual complexity onto our image. So now instead of it just being a really flat drop, it's a very dimensional and subtle drop. Now what if I want to do that same sort of thing within the eyes? Well first I can select the eyes. And one way to easily select is to use the Move tool at this point and to click on Auto Select in the options for the Move tool. 
That way, when you click on the shape or the layer, it will automatically select that layer. And let's darken these. Let's make a gradient overlay. But let's make this gradient overlay a lot darker. Come on. Lots of clicking here. So let's do something like this. So let's shift the gradient from going to white. Let's have it be kind of a darker grayish blue or green. There we go. It's at the same uh, angle, which is 30%, that I did for the gradient for the teardrop. And that's because there's something called global light that happens. And so unless you change it, it will default. Whoops, I didn't. I liked that color. Let me just try to get it again. Because there's kind of global light that happens, it will default towards having everything lit at the same angle, which is helpful. Remember, you do have to say OK to lock in your choices. And now I can do things like blend mode and opacity, you know, how it goes on to the brown. Take it down to maybe 70%. I can scale the gradient differently. But for blend mode, this time I'm going to say dissolve instead of normal. And what dissolve does is it gives it that grainy texture, just like noise did in my outer glow. And I can also give it an inner shadow, which is a lot like an outer glow. It's just the opposite. To make it simple, I'll just put it on normal mode and a nice black color. And then I'm going to increase its size. And it will make it look like those eyes are indented a little bit. And I can make that a little bit noisier as well. And you can even make it lopsided in terms of its distance because it's a shadow. You could make your inner glow dark as well as light. And then it won't be based on the, the lighting. It will be based more on just the edges of your shape. Let's, see, let's take the spread down. Take the noise down. For some reason, the noise is giving it a pretty hard edge. So just something subtle like that. So a little bit more shadow on those sides. Like that. Now I can take all those effects, and I can affect all the effects by not selecting any of them. Then you just have the general effect blending options, and I can take the effects opacity down without having to take the whole layer opacity down. Because remember, there's a brown eye underneath that. So maybe that's the right level. Okay, now I want to copy those same effects onto this eye. To do that, I have to duplicate the whole layer with Command-J, and then just move those effects over, and then delete the copy. And it copied the effects, but it kept them at 100%. And honestly, I kind of like the 100% better. So I'm just going to push these back up to 100% instead of 80 per whatever percent. OK, so now I've got eyes with layer styles. Let's do that same thing to the mouth. But the mouth has several shapes, right? It's that shape. And where's the other brown shape? So let's merge those shapes together. 
Oh, I can't because that shape's in between. So this is where I can get a little trickier. So I am going to add some effects to the, the lower shape. I'll just do a simple gradient overlay. Actually, let's make it even simpler. Let's just do a simple Uh, let's do an inner glow this time, or we can say inner shadow. Oh no, I already did inner shadow. So let's do inner glow. I'm trying to show you everything. And instead of screen mode, I'm going to push it to normal and I'm going to make it dark. A dark bluish gray. So you can see it doesn't have to just be black and white. And then I'm really going to spread it. increase its size so you can see that darkness spreading through. I'll give it a little bit of noise as well. So the brown kind of comes through. Okay, now I'm going to take that same effect. I'm going to copy it onto the other brown shape that's overlapping. And to do that, I duplicate the whole layer with Command J. Then I move the effect up to the new layer I want to affect, which is right there. And then I delete the copy because when you move the effect, it takes the effect off. Okay, so far so good, except there's another little shape here that I want to move that effect to. So I'll do the same thing again, make a duplicate, move the effect up. and then delete the copy. Okay, now you can see how these effects work. It's always going in from the edge. So now I can go in and increase the spread and size of these other layers, these other shapes, so that it's all one clean noisy effect. But there's still some variation there. So it's different than just doing a, a color fill. You can see the brown still coming through a little bit. And I might need to increase the size a little bit on our the base one where it all started. So I don't get that little brown echo. But you have control of all of this just within layer styles. Now the teeth shape. I can do, let's see, let's do a gradation. See how that looks. And then let's just take the opacity down on that gradation and play with the scale of it a little bit maybe turn off the noise. So I'm going to change it from dissolve to normal. Okay, let's dissolve it. But let's lighten it a little bit. Keeping the same angle, just changing the gradient colors. So we started with the light blue. I just like how now there's like a shadow on the teeth under the hand. Then I might want a little bit of a shadow on this edge as well. So what I can do is move this. Oops. Oh, I have to say OK here before it will let me add. That makes sense. So I'm going to add a new color and then I'm going to lighten it a little bit or darken it rather on this side. See how that changes. Okay, and then I can play with the scale. Yeah, that will work. 
You can always reverse it, but that's the right angle that I want.